Hello, everyone. Welcome to the preview show delivered by FedEx Racing. I'm your host, Alan Kavana, and joining me this week again, Marty Snyder from TNT. How you doing, Marty? Good to see you, man. I made notes, everyone. That's how important this race is this weekend. You will not see these the rest of the year. <laughs> I, I actually worked for this show. Well, kidding, that's no. because there's so much to talk about. The end of the NASCAR regular season comes down to this one race Saturday night in Richmond. And there's so many scenarios, so let's take a look at the points as they stand right now. Kurt Busch is in 10th. He has no wins, but he has a six-point lead on Jeff Gordon for that final chase for the Sprint Cup spot. And then there's the other race going on. Casey Kane, he's locked in with two wins, but Martin Truex Jr. holds a five-point lead over Ryan Newman for that final wild card spot. And look, defending champion Brad Keselowski is going to need a ton of help. All those scenarios, all those drivers on the track, Saturday night, how do you think this plays out? It's a lot to think about, Whew. isn't it? It's a lot to think about. And it's funny because I sat in the seat last year and I said that Kyle Busch was going to make his way in the chase and not Jeff Gordon and the exact opposite happened in the race. And I, I love it the fact that this, as we've gone further with the chase, the, the more complicated it's gotten as we've gotten to Richmond. You know, last year we really had two players we were talking about. We've got about six or seven we're talking about this year. But for me, it really starts with Joey Logano. And that's where I start looking at things. And I go, okay, two weeks ago I said they weren't going to be in the chase. I now owe them an apology. I think Joey Logano will be in the chase. You look at how well they ran at Richmond in the spring, finished third in that race. I think Joey Logano will be very strong this weekend. Greg Biffle always runs well at Richmond. I think he'll be strong contender this weekend. So I think Greg Biffle finds his way in. The guys I'm looking at are Jeff Gordon and Kurt Busch. I think Jeff Gordon is so good at Richmond in the past. He's always been very good there. But I go back to what Steve Letarte and Alan Gustafson told me. The entire Hendrick organization went to Richmond to test so that Jeff Gordon could be in the chase. So I think at the end of the day, Jeff Gordon is in the chase. The one thing that makes me think Kurt Busch may not be in the chase. I think speed-wise, they'll be good enough at Richmond to finish in the top 10 maybe. But the one thing that worries me, and it's something that a crew chief told me this week, and I've been thinking about it ever since, we always have long green flag runs at Richmond. You can go two, maybe even three pit stop sequences where you'll have three straight, straight, three straight green flag pit stops. I think that could be a problem for Kurt Busch and his team. You think about the one thing that's been a trip up for, this, for them this year, pit road. If they have one failure on pit road Saturday night and with all the pressure, and they haven't been in a situation like this yet this year, with all the pressure that will be on them, they cannot afford a failure on pit road. So when I look at that, and I kind of look at it as a Jeff Gordon versus Kurt Busch battle straight up, I think that's where they could have a problem. The other battle I'll look at, obviously, is the guys for the wild card. You look at Ryan Newman and Martin Truex Jr. Are they racing each other Saturday Yes, they night? are. They are. And, and people are losing the game for, for Ryan Newman. The game for Ryan Newman is not to get to the top ten. It's not a 20-point deficit he's trying to make up. He's trying to finish six spots ahead of Martin Truex Jr., and that's it. If you look at Truex went and tested in the middle of August at Richmond. One week later, Ryan Newman went. Kind of in reaction to what Truex and those guys did, they went to Richmond and said, hey, we need to go test there because if they learn something, we need to learn it. All he has to do is finish six spots ahead of Martin Truex Jr., and that's really the game for the wild card spot. So that's really all they're focused on. You take all that into account. Truex has never really been good that, rich, uh, that good at Richmond in his, in his career, and he's got the wrist injury. I, I just see Ryan Newman being able to leapfrog him and get his way into the chase as well. So many scenarios. Just imagine if Greg Biffle were to drop out of the top ten <laughs> or know, if Casey yeah. Kane were to get in. And I mean, then we've everything. got a whole other ball game we've got to watch. I mean, that's the, but that's the fun part yeah. about it. You know, we used to come to this Richmond race and it would be maybe one or two guys who were really fighting to make their way in the chase now. I love it with all these guys in the mix because it's making this race, and I think it's almost been downplayed too much, it's making this race to the chase, so much more fun to watch, and I think it's very exciting. Let's not lose sight of the top of the point standings because Jimmy Johnson, yeah. you know, he's got all the wins. He's Jimmy Johnson. Don't worry about it. But still, the last three races, three straight finishes of 28th or worse. You want to go into this chase with momentum. They don't have it right now. When, no. do, you, when do you start worrying? Because, I mean, well, he's the know, 48 team, but still. I think Chad Canales is worried now, not so much because of what's happened in the last few weeks. Some of it's been circumstantial. Uh, clearly at Michigan, they were trying some things engine-wise. So I don't think they were too worried about that. You do worry about the momentum, like you pointed out, Alan. You worry about that a little bit. But I'm more worried about the speed they haven't had the last few weeks. You know, you look at when we were in the races in July and August, the beginning part of August, they were incredible. I mean, nobody could touch the 48 car. You look at the Pocono races. You look at Indianapolis. They were clearly the fastest car on the racetrack. When was the last time we went to a racetrack and we said, Jimmy Johnson's clearly the fastest guy on the track? I don't think they're panicked, but I think they're a little little worried right now. All right. And so many scenarios. Everyone's got an agenda, obviously, on yeah. uh, Saturday night. So. 
who's going to win the race? Make it simple. I'm going to go with Kyle Busch this weekend. He's won a race at Richmond for four straight years now. Why not make it five straight? I think Kyle's very strong at this type of racetrack. They clearly have the terrific momentum after the win at Atlanta. Always good at Richmond. So I'm going to go with Kyle Busch this weekend, heading into the chase with some terrific momentum. So I'm going to go with Kyle Busch this weekend. I'm going with Clint Boyer. Past winner there, <laughs> second there in the spring. It's a driver with nothing to lose and everything to gain. Last week they gambled. We talked. We heard about this experimental motor, all this yeah. stuff. They lost that gamble. This week I think they win the gamble and I think they win the race because they need those points for the chase. Excellent pick as well. All right. Well, Marty Snyder, it's been a good uh, regular season. We'll see how it plays out. And next week we'll be talking about On the playoffs. On the chase, my friend. All right. For Marty Snyder, I'm Alan Kavana. Thank you for joining us for the preview show delivered by FedEx Racing. Enjoy the race Saturday night.